This is a Land Rover Discovery 3, a 2006, and this is a brand new Land Rover Discovery 5. And the question is, has the Discovery gotten any better in 14 years? That's what we're gonna find out today. And I'm sorry these trucks are so dirty. We got them completely 100% clean, and then we drove them two miles from the car wash to the trailhead, and well, February in Colorado, this is what they look like. Let's start out with design, because back in the day, Land Rover was the tough, rugged, go-anywhere mark, and then Range Rover was the streamlined, luxurious example. And you really see that here with the LR3. It's squared off, it's butch. It looks like it's ready to take on any continent on Earth. The new Discovery 5 is a lot more curvaceous, but it doesn't look quite as Land rover if you know what I mean. It's almost as if there was a communication error with the design studio. It's like they were designing the new Range Rover in the front. Very curved, these nice, elegant, thin headlights, huge wheels down the side, swooping side profile, this really cool looking C-pillar, and then their design boss came to them and said, ooh, I'm sorry guys, you're actually working on the new Discovery. So what they did is said, well, we've designed most of it, let's just lop the back end off, that'll be kind of square, and we'll call it a day. I'm not sure this one looks quite as good as the old one. Both of these Land Rovers share some classic Land Rover Discovery traits, such as this rise in the roof line, and this is actually here for a purpose. It's because if you look inside, the roof is raised so that they could actually raise the rear seat. This is called stadium seating, and this gives rear passengers an amazing view of the world. You actually sit up higher than the front seats. It feels like you're actually on a safari every time you ride in the back seat. The new Discovery also has a little kick up here in the rear, but it's tiny, it's itty bitty, maybe an inch or maybe even less than an inch to be honest. And what this means is that if you look inside, the rear roof really isn't any higher in the back seats than the front. So I appreciate they kept this for nostalgia, for design purposes, and the rear seats may be just a tiny bit higher than the front to give a slight impression of stadium seating, but it's nothing at all like the old one. One of the other classic Discovery design traits is this weird notch here on the back of the truck. And on Discovery 1 and 2, this notch was here because there used to be a big spare tire here and they wanted to maximize the rear window space. Well, the spare tire has moved underneath. So what you are left with is this weird shaped rear window. I guess an advantage is it, it does actually give you a lot of rear window and you do have a large sweep of the rear wiper and then of course your off-center license plate. So it's somewhat functional on an LR3, but not as useful as the old ones with the spare tire. The rear of the Discovery still has this classic Discovery swoop, except I'm not really sure why anymore. I mean, it's great that they still have a connection to their heritage, but it's pointing the wrong direction, and it also has nothing to do with the rear window. It's just, it's just a little bit weird. A lot weird. <laughs> So if you ask me, the new Discovery is just a little bit too curvaceous and too swoopy for a Land Rover. The old one, even though it's 14 years old, looks significantly better and it still looks modern even today. Let me know in the comment section below which one you think is better. But one area that has gotten substantially more improved over the years is the interior. Let's start with the old one. You're gonna be pretty shocked. <laughs> now the interior in the LR3 here looks brilliant. It looks really good, it's upright, it's kind of futuristic, modern, industrial, but then you touch things and you realize how poor it is, because everything is a terribly hard, just crummy plastic. These bezels that look like they should be aluminum feel like they're gonna come off in your hand. The switches are all flimsy. It's just really not that nice in terms of material quality. It really brings down the whole experience a few notches the second you step into the LR3. This could have been brilliant in here if they put the money into it, but they simply didn't. Now the new one is, well, it's just much nicer. The design is a little bit more luxurious, but everything you touch is either a soft leather or a stitched leather or an aluminum finish. I mean, it really is a beautiful interior. I especially like the steering wheel, which has this kind of cool design with these lights that illuminate on the steering wheel when you turn it on. It's just a great place to spend time. It's a lot, a lot more premium. The climate control system in this old Land Rover is pretty cool actually. It's very mechanical, but it's also entirely automatic. So rather than having 
a button to increase your climate control temperature. You actually have two knobs that range from 60 to 84 degrees, and then an auto function on both the driver and the passenger side. And then when you turn up the fan, rather than just having a traditional dial, you actually have this cool industrial looking dial with these little lights that increase in a little ring. It's actually very cool looking. The new one also has three dials, but this time they're very sleek and they're actually very modern. So the way they work is you turn them and then the digital number on the inside of the knob determines how high your fan is and what temperature you set both the driver and the passenger side to. The cooler part of them is though, they actually control the heated seats as well. So you push in and then turn the knob and you can see the heated seat getting warmer or cooler. Now, there's actually also a little blue seat for if we had cooled seats, but we don't. This LR3 or Discovery 3, I'm sorry I'm going back and forth, but depending on where you are in the world, it could be LR3 or Discovery 3, has a premium audio system, which gives you this crazy looking analog looking radio. So it's got loads and loads of buttons, FM, AM, CD, auxiliary, but the best part of it is it has two knobs for tuning the radio. Super easy to get the presets, just push the buttons. I love this system. It's great to use CD players, a little old school, but overall an amazing system. Now you'll notice something here for the aux, which of course is your auxiliary, and you're probably wondering where is it? Well, I thought it would be here in the center. It's not. Maybe down here below the climate control. It's not. No, the auxiliary port in an LR3 is actually down here in the rear seat. Isn't that crazy? Now, depending on your specification of LR3, there's actually a screen available up here as well that would control your navigation and a bunch of really neat off-road pages. However, if you didn't opt for the screen, what you got instead was a huge hole, which is actually pretty convenient for even the largest cell phones nowadays. Although it does look a little funny having this gaping cave right in the middle of your dashboard. The new Discovery, of course, has a traditional infotainment screen here in the middle that controls everything, radio, navigation, Bluetooth, all of it and it's much better than previous systems but it still is a little bit slow and a little bit freezy and a little bit laggy i mean compared to old models it's way better than it was but uh, but it's it still isn't brilliant and for example things such as tuning the radio which could be done with a knob you now have to constantly keep clicking the screen so instead of getting two knobs, you have a volume knob way over on the right side of the vehicle, I assume because this is British and they drive on the right, so the volume knob will be closer, but it's hard to reach if you're in the driver's seat. And you also get this open button. And you push the open button and the climate controls glide out of the way. But they still give you access to the climate here on the screen, of course, just in case you're impatient and can't wait for your passenger to do that. But it's there. The LR3 is loaded with cubbies for storage, and I love that. So of course you have the gaping cavernous hole in the middle of the dash here. You've got a fairly large center armrest, but you also have not one, but two glove boxes, your standard glove box and an upper glove box. And this is great if you plan on off-roading your vehicle or taking this across country, you've got a tremendous amount of space to put everything you'd ever want. You also have this cubby here, which is totally useless for everything. I can't find a use for it. Maybe one day it would have held like a microscopic cell phone, but nowadays, I mean, you're just gonna lose change and stuff in there. The new Discovery also has a lot of places to put things. So of course you've got your big cubby here, a couple of cup holders, a huge center armrest, which in this one is taken up by a cooler, your bottom glove box, and check this out, even the upper glove box as well. But this time, oh shoot, I thought it would fold down. This time it has a little electric button to fold down the upper glove box rather than a handle. See, pop it open and lots of places to put things in there. One cool Easter egg here on the new Discovery is actually this little outline badge that they hide here on the B pillar, but to see the whole badge, you actually have to open up both doors and then it reveals itself. That's of course the outline of the vehicle. Now getting into the back seat of the old Discovery is a little tricky just because of how tall these SUVs are off the ground, but they actually give you a little bit of a handle here on the back of both seats. So you can kind of grab it and hoist yourself in and when you're back here, it really is a great place to spend time. Now, some funny things are this center dome lamp. You'll see three circles located above it. And that's because we bought the poverty spec version here, which doesn't have the second or third row climate system. 
So we just have these three sad little plastic circles. But all Discovery 3s had a really awesome feature if you look up, because there's a main sunroof in the front that opens, but there's actually two more in the rear. There's one above the second row and one even above the third row. And the way they accomplish this is very clever because from here back is one single huge pane of glass. There's a center divider here, which you'll see on the interior. But if you look at the roof, it's just one huge, massive piece of glass. So that's how they get two sunroofs in the rear. And then of course, a separate hole up front here. The first thing you notice trying to get into the rear seats of the new Discovery are these extremely pokey doors. They have this big part that juts out toward you, which makes getting into the Discovery in tight spots a little bit tricky, especially for rear passengers. But there are some really cool things in the back seats of the new Discovery. So first of all, this one does have automatic climate control in the rear. Three knobs, just like in the front. You also have a couple of vents up top. And my favorite part, is the sheer amount of storage. So not only do you have your bottom storage, but you also have these little top cubbies. So you can put a lot of stuff back here and it's almost a completely flat floor in the back seat here. A couple of five volt USBs and another cubby. Lots and lots and lots of cubbies in this place. So that old Discovery has three sunroofs. The new one just has two. The front one opens, the second one doesn't, but they're both significantly larger than the rather small ones in the old one. All right, what's the Land Rover Discovery 3 like on the road? Well, it's heavy, it's slow, it's ponderous, it doesn't go very well, it doesn't stop very well, and I absolutely love it because so many modern SUVs are trying to be sporty and aggressive. This LR3 is like, no, we're just gonna cruise along at my speed, I'm gonna be soft and super squishy, and that's all I do. And I appreciate that so much because this is like the perfect road trip vehicle because it's soft and squishy and because of the driving position. This was called the command driving position and you sit on top of it. Like it is exactly what you do not want in a sports car where you're low and hugging the ground. This is like, we're gonna suspend you 30 feet in the air. You're gonna be disconnected from everything. But that is exactly what you want in an off-roader or an overlander because you can see the whole world even from the front seats. And they give you these funny little screw armrests, which the new one has as well, but they're kind of useless because the new one you sit so low, might as well just use a center. And this one is perfect for propping your hand up. You sit up way high, put your left elbow on the windowsill and cruise down the road. Now this Land Rover would have come with a choice of two engines. The first one was a four liter V6 out of the Explorer and that one was downright anemic. It's just, it did not have the oomph to propel this massive three row SUV. So the natural choice was this engine, which was a 4.4 liter V8, the AJ V8 it's known. It was in Aston Martins and Jaguars. And you're probably thinking, ah, that sounds powerful. And it is well over 300 horsepower. But to be honest, I am not really sure where that 300 horsepower is going because it certainly isn't to the wheels with any sort of gusto. Let me give you an example. There is 15 miles an hour and floored. Makes a good noise, 30, 40, 50, 55. Yeah, it just, it doesn't accelerate. Like it's so much weight, so much heft it's hauling around that even this 4.4 liter V8 simply isn't really enough to make this thing go where you need to go. I mean, it's adequate for everyday use, but passing power, ah, where is it? Go, go. All right, so going for a ride in the new Land Rover Discovery. Now, the first thing you notice is you really do sit a lot lower in this vehicle. And yes, I know that old Discovery has a slight lift on it, but that's not what I'm talking about. The seat is actually physically lower in the vehicle. So I no longer sit way up high on top of it, looking over the world. And that's a little bit of a shame because this drives now a lot more like just about any other German luxury or Japanese luxury SUV. It doesn't feel quite as off-roady or special. The other thing you'll notice is the ride is a lot firmer. So the old one kind of floated and wafted along. This one is a little bit more sporty, a little bit tighter, but it's also very quiet and very refined and still very comfortable. Now, what about power? Well, there are two engine options available in the new Discovery. This is the base engine. It's a three liter v6 supercharged unit and the optional engine is a three liter diesel and this base engine with 335 horsepower takes a while to shift down oh yeah but it moves pretty well and it'll tow a lot of weight like something like 7,000 pounds 
So it's a very capable engine and it makes a cool sound with that supercharger. All right, so let's take a look at the trunk of the Discovery 3. And just to clarify, uh, certain models were called the LR3 here in the US and abroad they were called the Discovery 3. They went to LR3 in fact because the Discovery name had such a bad reputation for reliability, they got rid of it altogether. And then with the 5, they brought it back in the US. But anyways, let's take a look at the trunk. So pop this open. And this has a real split tailgate. So the pop part opens up and then you push a button and you can pull the bottom part down, but a huge amount of space in the trunk here. All right, now let's talk about trunk space and the cool things in the back of the new Discovery 5. So first of all, power lift gate. Not all that unusual, but then you're immediately met with a wall. Because just like that old Discovery Land Rover tried to keep the old school tailgate, but rather than give you kind of a separated sheet metal divider, they give you this fuzzy thing. And to put it down, you have to push a button and it folds down. I'm, I mean, I appreciate that they have this here, although I'm not really sure how much it gives you. It's only another eight, nine inches of space to sit on and, and stuff. It's not really like a proper tailgate, but it does do some other cool stuff in the back. For example, take a look at this button. I push this button and the whole thing lowers just in the rear because it has air suspension. That's several inches lower now for loading things in and out. That's a really great design. And then we get to the third row. Let's talk about the old one first. So this Discovery was available in a five-seater and seven-seater configuration. This one started its life as a five-seater and then someone turned it into a seven-seater, which was quite a big job, I imagine. But it does mean that this is largely like this would have been from the factory. Although, let me know in the comment section below. I'm not sure that the seat backs would have been tan if this was a factory seven-seater, but all this componentry is from a factory model, so it, it works exactly the same. So to get into the <laughs> third row, first of all, you have to fold them up, which is funky. Now look at this tailgate design. This seat is easy to get at because there's a big notch here. However, this seat is much harder to get at because there's a huge kind of protrusion here. So what you have to do is get in, grab this little lever, and then this pops up, and there we go. And then you gotta run around to the side and pull this lever, and the seat will fold forward. And then you can see that our seat is nowhere near to being folded up because we got the back but not the bottom. So what you have to do then is grab this little lever and fold it up like that. Aha! Now look. Now you got your third roll all fixed into place. You know, it's not bad. It's a little bit narrow, but I actually have a surprising amount of knee room and a tremendous amount of headroom. And seriously, this is the best seat in the house because I can see everything because it's so much higher than anyone else. Plus, I have these massive cubbies back here. Just huge cubbies with some cup holders and a place to listen to the radio on a headset. So I have additional radio controls back here as well. That was pretty luxurious in 06. It's good once you're back here, but getting the seat up is just a, a real nightmare. It's not very good at all. This Discovery also has the optional third row. It's a couple grand extra. So to get in the third row, what you do is pull this lever and then it folds out of the way, the back seat, but really not all that much. So you have to be kind of limber. And then whoa, you hoist that aloft. Of course, that drags the rear cargo mat up with it, so you kind of have to fold it down. And let's see what the third row is really like. Oh boy. In the name of video. Oh yes. So there you can see the cargo mat. If you just put it up, it kind of blocks the rear visibility. So you kind of got to push it down. And then let me lift up this one too, so you can get a sense of what that looks like. And I guess I'll close this up. All right, so with this seat completely forward, so that passenger has no rear leg room, it's pretty good. But Alex, grab the little lever underneath and let's see what it'll really be like. Oh yeah, there you go. Well, it's not great, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, you do have some cubbies back here. You also have vents. That's kind of nice, but other than this USB, it's a pretty tight and uncomfortable place to spend a lot of time. So neither third row is really all that great. So for off-roading, the LR3 has skid plates underneath. 
It has an optional rear differential lock if you so choose. If you get that screen, it'll show you exactly what's going on with the four-wheel drive system. And if you look under here, in this little cover, let's see how this works. It even has a recovery loop. Pretty cool stuff. This one also has an aftermarket hitch on it. Um, so this truly was built for off-roading and with these small wheels that come on this truck stock, can really fit a large tire. So now for the part you all want to know about, which is the four-wheel drive system. And LR3 was a significant jump for Land Rover and actually the whole 4x4 world because this is the first truck to have a terrain response system, which is a number of switches and dials that'll set the vehicle up for whatever terrain you're going over. So that might be snow, it might be ruts, it might be rock crawl, it might be sand. And you can program this truck for exactly the type of off-roading you're doing. So here's how it works. Start up the vehicle. Okay, fairly simple. And then down here, you'll notice a couple of different knobs. This left switch is actually for the air suspension. The LR3 was the first Land Rover to incorporate air suspension with a fully independent design. So I push this switch forward to make the vehicle rise. Take a look. This right lever is actually for the low range system. So I put it in neutral and then I flick this paddle down. And now I've got my low range set of gears selected, which will help me crawl over just about anything. And this big yellow button, that is your hill descent control. It's all very simple. It looks a little bit old now, but this was really the genesis of all modern Land Rover terrain responses. This new Discovery also has terrain response, but this time terrain response too. They've upped it a game. So I've got normal, I've got grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand, and rock crawl. Actually, all those are the same, but it's a much faster system and much more advanced. Of course, I also have a low range on this one in height adjustable air suspension. Take a look. This new terrain system also has an auto function, which will automatically adjust for the given terrain. And it also has this little button here, which is like off-road cruise control. So you set the speed and let the vehicle do everything else. It really is super simple. A couple of things you need to know about the new Discovery though. Unlike the old one, not all new Discoveries come with air suspension. It's an option. And some of you are probably like, hooray, I can get steel springs. It's not gonna fail. And then some of you are probably like, that's kind of interesting. And it is interesting because you can also now get the Discovery without a low range, which is also a little bit of a bummer. So it kind of feels like they're going away a little bit from their off-road heritage. This one, of course, has all of it. It also has an optional rear differential lock, which is really cool. And one of the best new off-road systems in the Discovery is actually on the screen. Take a look. If I go home here and then, nope, that's not what I want. If I go right here and take a look at, where'd it go? They really hide it. 4x4i gives me a disclaimer and check this out it's got drive assist so it'll show me my cameras exactly where my wheels are and what they're doing it's got something called low traction launch which will help me get out of sticky situations and it has off-road information and this is arguably the coolest screen so it shows me what my suspension is doing what the automatic lockers are doing if they're locked if they're unlocked it's just really neat to see all this connectivity for off-road screens and actually take a look at this it'll give me different suggestions and what each program does. So for example, let's take a look at mud and ruts. Used to go cross muddy, deeply rutted, soft or uneven ground. And it recommends I raise the suspension, all that. So it is very sophisticated and it takes a lot of the stress and a lot of the pressure out of off-roading. So there you have it guys, the Discovery really has changed quite a lot in 14 years. The new one is very elegant, it's very refined, whereas the old one is more butch, but also kind of crummy on the inside. You know, I'm really happy with some of the stuff on the new Discovery. The four-wheel drive system's incredible, the air suspension still works very well. I just really wish it didn't look so rounded off and so urban. As always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Let me know in the comment section and click that link below. Head over to our website. Let me know which one you think is better. And we'll see you guys next time right here at the Fastlane Car.